We call it the miracle of modern agriculture. But we have lived with the high productivity of the American farmer so long that it has become, like the miracle of life itself, an everyday commonplace fact of existence. At one time, 90% of the American people lived and worked on farms. Today, fewer than 5 million workers in agriculture supply food for more than 200 million fellow Americans. And of every dollar of take-home pay, only about 18 cents or less is spent for food. Beyond that, it's important to remember that this cost would be even lower if Americans were willing to settle for the monotonous, low-protein diets which most of the human race must accept even today. While Americans eat like this by working only 80 minutes a day. The problems of America today are the problems of plenty and not of want. There are many reasons for the successful performance of modern agriculture. The application of machine age power is one of the most important factors in making today's agriculture the most efficient industry in the world. One of the earliest applications of machine age technology to agriculture, of course, was Cyrus McCormick's famed reaper. With the development and perfection of the gasoline tractor, this 1924 Farmall marked a significant point in the development of row crop tractor power. Today's farmer uses sophisticated technology and increasingly powerful machines to multiply his own strength and speed and skill a hundredfold or more. As profit margins and labor supplies have dwindled, the pressure has been on the farmer and on his suppliers to make his operations still more efficient. Today's farmer has to be good at a lot of things. He's a good businessman, for instance. If he isn't, he isn't farming today. He has an understanding of soil conditions and the proper use of efficient fertilizers in precisely determined amounts. He has to be a pretty good geneticist, too, with an understanding of the new and better hybrids and the improvement of herds and flocks through genetic research. And to stay on top of his complex and demanding job, he has to keep up with the constant stream of developments in science and technology that are continuing to transform agriculture. Farmers, agricultural engineers, and researchers have always worked closely together. It's that kind of business. Today's emphasis on specialization and refinement has, if anything, made the relationship an even closer one. Chances are the ag engineer grew up on a farm and so he knows farm problems firsthand. And although he may work in an air-conditioned office with computers, telemetry, and other space-age gadgetry, he keeps his feet on the ground with frequent field trips to see how his ideas work out when put to the test. A lot of men like him work here. It's the largest agricultural equipment research and engineering center in the world and also houses a variety of support groups. There are satellite departments located at East Moline, Illinois, Memphis, Tennessee, and Phoenix, Arizona, under the direction of the headquarters facility at Hinsdale, Illinois. There are about 1,600 people working at the four engineering facilities. Two-thirds of these are scientific, engineering, and technical specialists. Most of the rest are skilled craftsmen who turn ideas and drawings into hardware. It's been said that nothing happens until somebody draws a line. But there's something that has to happen even before that first line is drawn. Someone has to have a thought, an idea, or a concept for a new or better way of doing a job. And this, in turn, is usually based on a clear understanding of what needs to be done. Some ideas start with the farmer himself, the man with a day-in, day-out working knowledge of the job to be done. Others come from the members of the dealer and marketing organizations who have an intimate knowledge of the special requirements of their farmer customers. 
Others come from our land-grant colleges and experimental stations, which contribute their share to the accumulated body of knowledge, while still others come out of an engineer's own background of education and experience, an urge to find a better, more efficient solution to the farmer's need for increased productivity and profitability. If a concept seems to be promising and workable, someone here at the engineering center will begin the process of development and engineering. Computers play an early part in product development. If basic front and side views of a design are fed in, for instance, this graphic console can then generate its own top view or another angular view. An engineer can introduce changes in the design by indicating them on the face of the display screen with an electronic pen, as shown here. The computer is also used to simulate what will happen to various designs under field conditions and indicate what a part or component will do under certain kinds of stress. But ideas, concepts, and computer output must be translated into product. One stage in that development may be the building of a full-scale wooden mock-up of the new design. Wood, rather than metal, because it is easier to make changes. Turning the designs into metal for actual testing requires a staff of highly skilled craftsmen and plenty of specialized equipment. Here, a gear is subjected to quality control inspection prior to assembly into an experimental machine. The engineering center also contains a complete welding facility, forging and heat treating equipment, and in fact, just about every kind of metalworking equipment imaginable. In addition to building new experimental components, it is often necessary to build the equipment to test them. Today's machines are designed for long, productive lives but it is impractical to spend years in determining this life expectancy. Many ingenious methods are used, therefore, to compress the 10 years of wear and tear into a few months of testing. Here, hay is fed into a forage harvester and wear and tear is monitored by computer. Stress analysis is also used to check reliability and life expectancy. Here, a stress coating is being applied to a component Stress coating is an extremely brittle lacquer. When the component is placed under a strain, this coating cracks at the point of highest stress. Strain gauges are now placed on the area where failure may occur, and the component's ability to take punishment is progressively tested. The stress is measured, and if necessary, the part is modified to reduce or resist stress to ensure proper life. On an exposed part, such as this, strain gauge information is transmitted by the attached wires. When the use of wires is impractical or impossible, as in a drivetrain, for instance, a radio transmitter may be used to transmit the desired information to a receiver at a remote location. Other methods of testing endurance include a hot room where the temperature can be run up to a figure hotter than West Texas in August and a cold room, which can simulate a February morning in North Dakota. When an all-new machine is designed from the ground up, perhaps three prototypes will be built. One will be assembled and tested as a unit, while the remaining parts will be built into components and tested individually. The completed prototype may be tested on treadmill rollers like these subjected to the destructive bump track outside the center, and run under load continuously and unmanned 24 hours a day. Here, the engine compression of the second tractor duplicates a field load for the tractor under test. Various types of dynamometers are used to test the equipment. This electric amplodyne is being used to measure horsepower being delivered to the power takeoff. This is a fuel consumption test. The automatic trip scale and a time meter measures and records the pounds per hour of fuel consumption. Component systems, such as this transmission, are tested under conditions which are known and measurable, 
but which duplicate loads and stresses to be encountered in the field. Today, increasing emphasis is being placed on refinements in operator safety and environment. Tests like these, conducted in a lab and out in the field, are used to determine the capabilities of new rollover protection structures to resist the impact of the weight of an overturning tractor and give the operator protection. Other research is aimed at giving the operator a more comfortable as well as safer operating environment by lowering noise levels and filtering and conditioning the air. But isolation from noise and vibration creates another problem to be solved. In his safer, more comfortable operating environment, the operator can no longer count on his senses to warn him of potential trouble as he once could. So it becomes necessary to build trouble detecting devices, like this solid state monitor control system which draws the operator's attention to a malfunction as soon as it develops. Within the engineering center is an electrical laboratory where design and development work is continued on long lasting items such as spark plugs and distributors as well as on the newest solid state sensing and control systems. Now the machine will be tested under actual field conditions. Its performance is evaluated and further changes and refinements are made. The next step is to manufacture a limited production run. This may be anything from 10 to perhaps 50 or 100 machines. These machines are now placed in the hands of farmers who operate them under full crop production conditions. Tests are run in various conditions of soil, terrain, and climate, in various parts of this country and overseas. Results are evaluated after this lengthy and closely observed period of field trial, and any necessary changes and refinements are made before full production is started. The machine now goes into production and the manufacturing processes are monitored by product reliability and quality control organizations within the plant. Then, a three-man team, composed of representatives of engineering, manufacturing, and marketing, is assigned responsibility for each new machine. They evaluate it and make recommendations for improvement in performance, reliability, and cost. International Harvester has established a product reliability center near the engineering center. Staffed by specialists, this organization is set up to assure quick correction of the problem, often in days rather than the months that were once required. In actual practice, the process of evaluation and engineering never really stops. It continues as long as a machine is being produced, sold, and used. This process produces a series of refinements which, added together, total up to a continuing improvement in the productivity, reliability, economy, and safety of the equipment the farmer and rancher uses. We've already noted that early tractors signaled the development of modern crop production. More recent major advances include torque amplification, and the infinitely variable speed ratio of hydrostatic transmissions, which were introduced first on combines and then on tractors. The latest major advance is the new cyclo planter. It has been termed the most revolutionary advancement in seed planters in more than 200 years. Two Minnesota farm brothers decided to look for a design that would speed up, simplify, and improve the consistency of the planting process. IH engineers recognized the idea as a real breakthrough and set about to develop the concept into practical commercial application. The cyclo planter replaces previous mechanical systems with air power, ensuring accuracy and minimizing maintenance. Further development of the principle led to the production of a machine which has revolutionized an operation that had been essentially unchanged for more than a hundred years. Here at International Harvesters Research and Engineering Center, the process of discovery and development goes on. Not every day brings a revolutionary discovery, but every day does bring another step in what is perhaps the most significant revolution 
the success of modern, mechanized agriculture. Agriculture is the most productive industry in the world. It got that way through the farmer's determination to find newer and better ways of doing his job. At International Harvester, the sun never sets on the engineer's equally determined search for the newer and better equipment with which the U.S. farmer will continue his service to mankind.